let's go into um, this anti-intellectualism that you mentioned earlier. One of the first things that ever exposed me to you personally and to the AHA was an article you wrote about the anti, what you, I think you called the anti-intellectual movement in the United States. Could you elaborate on what you meant by that and, and how you see that being played out? I think the article you're talking about is probably one uh, entitled uh, Anti-Intellectualism is Killing America. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very widely circulating article, that's for sure. It got a, a few million hits. But uh, I guess it just kind of struck a chord in that, uh, you know, the, many of the problems in America today can be traced back to uh, anti-intellectualism in one form or another. And, uh, you know, we could spend a lot of time talking about the details, but it's not uh, just one problem. You look at almost any problem and you can connect it to anti-intellectualism in one way or another. You know, the, the way that we have become such a uh, um, war-oriented country. I mean, we've been at war now for uh, over a dozen years and there's no end in sight. They, we're currently fighting the longest war in the nation's history and it really looks like we're becoming a, a nation of permanent warfare. Well, how did that happen? You know, mm -hmm. uh, how, how did we allow that to happen? You can actually trace it in some ways to anti-intellectualism, the way that America is, uh, many Americans are oblivious to facts. We went storming into Iraq back in 2003 because about 70% of the population believed that Saddam Hussein was directly responsible for the 9-11 attacks, which of course there's never been any evidence to suggest that he had any connection to it uh, at all. Uh, almost all the hijackers were Saudi Arabian and, you know, we can go get into that. But the, uh, uh, the you know, so there's the uh, oblivion. Uh, Americans being oblivious to facts. There's also the uh, uh, the nationalism and hyper patriotism that feeds into it. You know, it's one thing to love your country and to love your homeland, and of course, that's a natural, innate human tendency to to have a fondness for one's homeland. But in America, it has become uh, you know uh, on steroids. So we are hyper patriotic. We have yes. to you know. Uh, in, uh, assume that everything has to do with American greatness and of course we connect that to a militarism that you know you can't have patriotism nationalism without militarism and this exaltation of the military so you know that just shows how in numerous ways anti-intellectualism feeds into all that and uh, you know you could go from one issue to another crime you know the 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 tendency for Americans to be susceptible to uh, law and order rhetoric from politicians. I mean, it's so simplistic, it's so easy to just say, let's lock them all up. So what do we do? We build this uh, prison industrial complex and start locking people up. Uh, racism, uh, another American problem that can be traced to anti-intellectualism. Just the, uh, you know, uh, how many times have we, have we heard that racism is really just ignorance? I mean, people are people and we should be able to, uh, you know, work with one another without, you know, having these racist labels and, and you know, so there's just one one issue after another, and uh, this ugly, uh, uh, ugly anti-intellectualism just keeps popping up as part of the problem in American life. So. Mm -hmm. For sure, I think it relates to, um, you know, our educational system, of course, uh, which has lots of things wrong with it. Um, to put it, you know, very succinctly and mildly, I guess. Um, and also, I've, I've done a lot of work trying to, or looking at uh, critical thinking as a subject, you know, trying to popularize it, trying to talk about it, um, what it is, how you do, go about doing it, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. has been an effort of mine on my channel. But, you know, something um, hit me the other night, a Noam Chomsky quote, actually, about the fact that that it's not that people can't think, it's what they choose to think about. And he made an analogy to uh, sports. You know, you watch sports, you watch sports analysis, you watch sports shows, and there's quite a lot of thinking and critical analysis going on of a football game and, and the, all the various statistics and all the various things that people keep in their heads and now they analyze what's going on in the game and all that. 
which shows that, you know, sports, some sports people are not necessarily known for their, you know, uh, amazing intellect. And yet they demonstrate intellect on that subject because they choose to use their brain power in that direction. I'm wondering what, what are your thoughts on that in regards to these more broad topics? Well, th that's right. I think the point Chomsky was making is that Americans aren't stupid, uh, despite their reputation. Uh, totally. You know, where you especially if you talk to Europeans, you'll often hear, uh, you know, people just kind of dismiss Americans as being stupid, but they're really not stupid at all. You talk to the average American and, you know, they can uh, spout statistics from uh, baseball and football That's in right. great detail. It's actually quite impressive, you know, that, uh, you know, you'll be sitting on the couch watching a football game and uh, whoever you're watching with will, uh, you know, start talking about, you know, that wide receiver back in 2003, you know, was third in the league. For It's really impressive. It takes as you said, a lot of intellectual ability to uh, compound all those facts and keep them in your head and to be able to talk about them. But uh, I think the further point Chomsky was making, though, is that this is all evidence that Americans are, in fact, intelligent, like all, all people are, are intelligent, uh, that, but we're distracted. It's the old Roman, uh, you know, bread and circuses, you know, mm -hmm. just make sure that the masses are appeased uh, make sure they're fed and make sure they're entertained and distracted. And that's really what America has become. We're, we're an entertainment obsessed uh, people, uh, somewhat lazy when it comes to engaging in public policy. In fact, you know, politics in America really is just another spectator sport. I mean, that's even how the media cover it. If you watch how CNN or any cable station or for that matter, your nightly uh, local newscast covers uh, politics. It's very similar to the way ESPN covers sports. It's, uh, you know, there's somebody at the anchor desk and there's a few interesting tidbits thrown out. There's a highlight from last night and, uh, you know, very little substance. Uh, and uh, it entertains you. You feel that you somehow are informed, which you're really not, if that's where you're getting your information. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all framed in terms of winners and losers and who's ahead in the polls.